Okay, <coughs> this is a video about how to add Monte Carlo to a project finance model. The file is called Commodity Price with Monte Carlo Simulation. I used to have fun with this. I mean, you, you can see how you can uh, perhaps get addicted to this, but you know, you might also see that it doesn't really what it can really answer is, is is maybe a little bit questionable so uh, um, you see why uh, people who have are a little bit mathematical get all excited about this here's the way the model starts it's a standard model and let's use this model to talk about the whole business of uh, of uh, let's say we sculpt the, the, the that, which is kind of silly. If I put this gear there, there we go. let's say we sculpted that. Why we do this? Who knows? In a in a in this kind of project finance. But here's what I wanted to show you about this. If you do this, and then you're going to do some risk analysis, which is really what the Monte Carlo simulation is going to be all about you want to fix the debt because what you don't want to happen and that is a copy and paste macro I'm sorry about that I don't know maybe there's a, a, a different way to do that I'm trying to think about it uh, now this debt is fixed and what you do is you click this off now when this is off I don't know what happened here let's not worry about that right now um, when you put this off now we can start to change some things if we go and make a, a low case it keeps the debt the same it didn't reduce the debt when we reduced the analysis we have a lower dscr and everything else Ooh, that was bad what i just oh i guess uh, what did i do in the base case with that did i i had too much debt no wonder the we had a kind of, so let's go back to the structuring. Um, let's we better have a higher DSCR. You really need a much much higher DSCR than this. Okay, so let's put something like 1.5 in for the base case. Then what we do is we uh, I don't sound that enthusiastic. I'm sorry about that, but and then you fix the debt first. Okay, copy and paste it, and then you switch it to a uh, structuring mode, and then we look at our low case, and we, uh, we kind of survived the low case. All right, so that's the standard scenario analysis, but now let's add Monte Carlo analysis to this, and when we add Monte Carlo analysis, we can do all sorts of things. Let's say we put a cash flow sweep in there, okay, that means we're paying off the debt early. All right, that's what we should do. And what we can do is look at one of the questions perhaps you can answer is what is the benefit of a cash flow sweep given different volatilities? Now we also can hedge this. Let's say we have no hedging. Okay. Maybe our base case price is high. But now let's get a little more interesting. Now I put a, a volatility 26% volatility, that's, if it's oil, it's probably a little bit higher, especially recently. And we can also correlate the construct the production. So if we just put some volatility and notice what happens, our, ooh, ooh, we had a bad scenario, our price went down. The really bad news is that our PLCR is below one, which means with a 100% cash flow sweep, we were not able to pay off the debt. I re press the F9 button, can't press the F9 button, so I make a little macro here to calculate. That one, it looks pretty good. Oops. That one, it looks really bad. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. That's very good. That's okay. That We have a bad DSCR, but we're paying off with the Ella PLCR, the Project Life Coverage Ratio, so you can... Uh, you can, yeah, isn't this fun? I don't know if this is your idea of fun, but you can uh, kind of click on this and see what happens. Now, why don't we go through a couple of other things? If 
you can see this was quite volatile, and we had, I don't know, we might have had a 50% probability of, of default. If you put a mean reversion factor in, let's, let's make it a 50% mean reversion factor. That, you notice what's happening here is when the price goes kind of down, it goes back up. We had an okay PLCR. Oops, that one didn't work so well. That one's okay. That one's okay. Oop, bad. Bad. I don't know. It should have. What I was hoping to happen is that uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, it should have, uh, I'm going to check the, the calculation for a minute. Well, that was incredibly stupid. I put the mean reversion in the production, not the price. And then I started telling you, oh, stupid. Okay, so if we put the mean reversion in, notice just how dramatically lower our probability of default goes down. Okay, that's the importance of the mean reversion. And let's put, even if we have a relatively low mean reversion, uh, we we still we still have a dramatically improved uh, credit profile. So you have to understand the economics of the mean reversion. I you know whether you understand and put some probabilities in and all that is is a different story. But this is a pretty dramatic thing. Now uh, this is so bad. Let's take the mean reversion out and let's put a now we'll put a production uh, 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 production scenario in, and here we have to put a correlation. So in this case, why don't you look at the bottom graph just for a minute? If we press F9, you can see that here's here's what I we put a 50% correlation, and we use this can't even pronounce it Cholesky Cholesky factor, and you can see sometimes the correlation is above like this one, sometimes it's below, hopefully on average the correlation will be the, what you, what you uh, put as the input, you can imagine, and correlation should be, I think if it was oil, when the oil price goes down you're going to probably produce less, maybe, I don't know, could be, uh, so we can put this in, if we have no correlation, let's try Let's try a scenario with no correlation. Okay, then we have uh, no correlation in this one, high correlation, no correlation. I'm looking at covariance and negative correlation, so uh, you can kind of see how it works. Okay, I'm obviously pressing the button too many, many times, but uh, whatever. Um, and then let's put a 100% correlation in. And then you can see kind of how the prices move together. So the 100% was working. And then now what you can do is you can test. What you really want to do is test these statistics or even these statistics with different uh, parameters. Okay, and you can imagine you could put more parameters or less parameters in and, and, and see how it all uh, see how it all works. So I don't know. Maybe this would be impressive just to show people. Okay, but we're we're not really finished. Okay, so I I don't know. Let's put this down to uh, some correlation. Why don't we put some mean reversion in? Okay, and then once we put some mean reversion in, then here's what you can do. This simulate. All this simulate uh, a button does is it goes through and computes this over and over again. Here we have how many? 10,000 simulations. Now, if I press this button, I'm going to have to turn the video off and then come back to you. But you can get a distribution of the PLCRs. I think that's the most important one and see what the probability of a... Uh, getting the DSCR below 1 is, um, and you can put different parameters over here and see, and of course different debt 
parameters, different characteristics such as with a cash flow sweep and without a cash flow sweep. And then you can see well, what happens to the uh, 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 probability distribution of the DSCR, the PLCR, and all of that. Okay, that's the exciting part. It almost looks too good to be true, and it probably is, because these things are so difficult to calculate, and a lot of these things are very, very sensitive to the... Uh, uh, to the parameters. Now, I hope what you do is you don't get intimidated by this and you don't say, oh my gosh, this man, he put Monte Carlo simulation in here. That, you know, that must be above me. It's not. Here's what you do to incorporate it in your model. You just have to really add a few lines. Now, in this, I, I kind of showed you how you do this. You can start the thing without volatility and then put your volatility parameter in. Now, I think we did this uh, monthly. So if we put a annual E67, let's see what E67 is. Okay. Uh, I should have used the uh, old, that's the, we can get the periodic volatility from the annual volatility. This is all explained in, in the Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, exercises and of course in the book um, and then you can decide whether to apply it or not apply it so once you have the uh, 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 volatility you put the normal inverse uh, of the distribution and you can do the same thing and then you can put all sorts of things in about a, a, a minimum and a maximum uh, a level and where is the uh, I mean reversion? Just a minute. Uh, price without volatility. And then you finally adjust it for the mean reversion. Let me just see. This is uh, price without volatility before the minimum and maximum. I, I am. Uh, oh, here's the. Uh, Here's the mean reversion adjustment. Okay, the formula is a little bit long, and I'm not going to go through it. But essentially, you just put these in your revenues, and you, then you can put well, what happens if we hedge or don't hedge. What happens to the probability of default, and then and then the rest of the model is all exactly the same. Okay, and you really only had to put a couple of different formulas which are uh, fully explained in the, in the Monte Carlo exercises. And we'll go through that uh, one by one, but this really shows you what you can do with this. So this is kind of a cool distribution, probably. You'd like to show this distribution with and without the, the Monte Carlo simulation. Okay? And ah, that's enough of that model, that, that analysis.